will have completed the first round of the draft. So I want to look at what we'll be talking about on that Friday morning, the morning after uh, round one. What, what will be the big headlines that day? Harry, what's yours? For me, the Patriots are going to get their quarterback. You're sitting at a number three spot. I don't think they can afford to say, you know what, we're going to wait till another time to get our quarterback. Right now, you have a guy that's probably going to be the third quarterback taken in the draft, which will be Drake May. If you have an opportunity to get him right then and there, you must do it. Dominique, what will be the Friday morning headline for you when we're sitting here two weeks from now? Hopefully for J.J. McCarthy's sake that the Vikings trade up and draft him. As we talked about earlier, that's probably the best available situation for a rookie quarterback. And as I've said a number of times that I think more quarterbacks are, are ruined than made in this league, I think that the situation matters much more than anything else. Uh, and all these quarterbacks drafted in the first round have plenty of talent. So I hope that a quarterback uh, with that talent lands in uh, Minnesota. They trade up to rescue one of these quarterbacks. How about you, Mike T? J.J. McCarthy delivers another trophy in terms of a massive trade haul to his old coach, Jim Harbaugh, at the Chargers. Here's how I figure, guys. First three picks, we, we know will be quarterbacks. Arizona at four stays there. Let's say they take Bart Harrison. Now at five, the Chargers get that call from the Vikings for 11 and 23, and maybe something else to come up to number five to take J.J. McCarthy. So they win a national championship a few months ago, and now J.J. McCarthy puts a cherry on top and helps Coach Harbaugh get a massive trade haul from the Minnesota Vikings for the fifth pick. It feels like quite a rise for J.J. McCarthy to get into the top five of the NFL draft based on, you know, what we were talking about during the season. Is he worth it? Is he worth a top five pick? When it comes to the NFL draft, in my opinion, it's not about if he's worth the pick. It's about what is the market and what a team needs. And when you look at the Raiders, you look at the Vikings, you also look at the Denver Broncos, those three teams need a quarterback. So if they need to move up, in which we know the Vikings, they have two first-round draft picks, and if they need to do so to go get their quarterback, if they see a guy that they like, then you must go do it. So it's all about what a team actually needs, more so than is this player worth being a fifth, uh, the fifth pick in the draft. I've been talking about this for months. Look, I I've seen him practice behind Cade McNamara. He's lost one game as a starter, 49 touchdown passes, almost ran for another 1,000 yards. He has... Character and leadership beyond reproach. He's beloved by his teammates. All he wants to do is win in terms of he didn't try to force throws. He's learned how to manage the game. He's a great athlete. So to me, like, what are we missing here? I think he's going to be a great NFL player who can make throws like that running to his left with great accuracy down the field. So I'm not surprised at all. I think he deserves it. And if he went even second or third, I wouldn't be surprised. If he went second or third, you would not be surprised. If he cracked into that top three of Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. You know, Dan, when you talk to people, teams around the league, I think 60% would say Caleb Williams first. Some would take Jaden Daniels. And when you get into the Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, I think Drake May has the lead, but I'm not sure by how much. Wow. Dominique, what do you think about all these quarterbacks going in potentially in the top five? It's a gamble. I mean, it's the team's taking a risk because if you hit on that quarterback, then you are an immediate Super Bowl contender for the next four or five years until you sign that extension. But if you miss on it, then the fall is not nearly as bad. You can take another shot in a couple years. So I understand why some teams would do it, but it's not necessarily the smart thing considering where the teams are, like we talked about the Giants. But I do understand teams that feel like they are close taking a shot at a quarterback because we see what position the Houston Texans are in right now because they got it right last year. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just amazed. You said that you think he might be able to crack into that top three. I feel like that top three has been set for, for a while in, in a lot of people's minds. Would you be shocked? Would I be shocked? Honestly, yes, because when I look at Drake May and you look at the upside, right, and how raw he is right now, and we know the Patriots have a stopgap quarterback in Jacoby Brissett. I think at the end of the day, we could be talking about Drake May potentially being the best quarterback in this draft class, right? So I don't see why I would take, you know, J.J. McCarthy over Drake May. I, and I, just to be clear, I, I, would, I would take Drake May over him. I think all four are going to be really good. I think we're going to look back similar to 2004, Roethlisberger, Rivers, Eli Manning, where they all turned out to be really good. I think these four quarterbacks draw a line. I'd be surprised if all four weren't successful. Read and react, and you'll notice that we spell read a certain way, and that's because our NFL draft analyst, Jordan Reed, who spells his last name that way, is joining us this morning for read and react. Jordan, great to see you. Uh, let's start with the quarterbacks at the top of the draft. Would you say 
that Drake May is the second best quarterback in this year's draft? Yes, I would. I have Drake May ranked just behind Caleb Williams, who is my second overall player. Drake is actually my fourth overall player in the draft. When I look at the combination of the prototypical size of six foot four, 230 pounds, the arm strength, and everything else that I get in that package, I think he has a Justin Herbert, Josh Allen type of ceiling. Yes, I know the decision making and the accuracy is scatter shot, and it is inconsistent at moments. But when we take some of the heavy lifting off of his plate, which is what he had to do over the past two seasons at North Carolina, I think he's only going to continue to get better. Nick, do you agree with this assessment of Drake May? Absolutely. I mean, I've been confused for Jake, Drake May. He must be very baffled himself because, like uh, we just heard, he's the prototype. Like, this is the quarterback who we always are told is going to be the next best thing. And it's not as if we don't have uh, many examples in the league of this type of player with these kind of great, impressive tools with uh, scattershot accuracy succeeding. So uh, I think Drake May is probably more befuddled than any of us that he's been kind of slying a little bit in the opinions of draft analysts. Of course, it really only matters what Washington thinks, right? They're picking second, assuming Caleb Williams goes first to the Bears. You taking May? Yeah, I am. And again, really because of the things Jordan alluded to, being built to last. I love Jaden Daniels. If we have one game to play, I'm going Jaden Daniels. But when you look at him, I love the Justin Herbert comparison, Graz. Hmm. And 17-game season now, body type matters. 66 different quarterbacks started a year ago. And I just, I love what he can do in terms of his floor and his ceiling and the ruggedness of how he's built. So this gets tricky because yeah. if I'm in the front office of Washington, I'm saying to myself, I just hired Dan Quinn with the free agents that they brought amongst their fo football team. I think they want to win right now. And with Drake May, I think he needs time to sit, be able to learn the game a little bit more, clean up some footwork, uh, release, uh, all those things. And I don't think Washington can afford that right now with the roster that they have. New England can with their stopgap quarterback. But if you draft Drake May second overall, he has to play. Yeah. And I don't think you want him to do that right now if you're Washington. Interesting. All right, Jordan, you said you had Caleb Williams ranked as the, your number two player in the draft. That tells me that, that a non-quarterback is number one, and I'm guessing it's Marvin Harrison Jr. Am I correct? It is, and nothing has changed for me since the fall. And everybody knew in the stadium who was getting the ball when Ohio State's offense was on the field, and that was number 18. And we all know that the quarterback play so, was so part of Ohio State last year, and he still was able to produce. I think this is an elite type of prospect we're talking about. Calvin Johnson, Julio Jones, A.J. Green, Jamar Chase, Larry Fitzgerald. He's wow. on that type of tier of talent. And whoever gets him is probably going to be a top 10 type of receiver as early on as his rookie season. What's our wide receiver think? I think he's the best player in the draft. Size, speed, can play inside, outside, could build the offense around him. But also, Mike T, I love that he's a second generational professional athlete. And I know you've been in the front office. That's something that you guys value when you're looking to take a player. That means we should be drafting your son. <laughs> he damn right about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully my son's the guy that's going to be uh, taking the draft. <laughs> we'll see. Nick, yeah, what kind of impact do you think Marvin Harrison Jr. can have on a franchise? Yeah, I think Jordan nailed it. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is like future Hall of Fame status player, and he's the type of guy that you can build an offense around. We always looking for quarterbacks uh, in these early picks, which, I mean, it makes sense, rightfully so. However, I think there are other ways to have a great impact on a team, and we've seen it throughout history with uh, a lot of different players at other positions. I think Vaughn Miller comes to mind, J.J. Watt comes to mind, Randy Moss comes to mind, where you drop a player on a team and it changed the fortunes of the team going forward. I think that Marvin Harrison and junior at an important marquee position like receiver has that ability also and I'm glad to hear that we're not pretending like the only thing that matters is quarterbacks yeah interesting but that does in fact lead me to my next question which is about quarterbacks so sorry about that Nick uh, we'll get back oh. to this. Jordan the Giants are picking sixth once upon a time they were picking sixth. they drafted Daniel Jones that wasn't that long ago he's still on the team should they be thinking about a quarterback at that spot this year should they think about one? Yes. Should they take one? No. They need a high-end wide receiver one. They don't have anybody on this wide receiver core that eventually has the potential to be a top-end type of wide receiver. There's a lot of excitement about Jalen Hyde and a lot of other receivers, but when you need that prototypical wide receiver one, they don't have that on the roster. And as far as the sixth overall pick, I'm looking at Romo Dunze of Washington or even Malik Neighbors of LSU. Mm. Either one of those guys would give them a true bona fide wide receiver one. 
look, I, I want both here. I, I don't want this to be an or, I want in. I want one of those great receivers. You can't have like, both. They're not, not picking sixth and seventh. <laughs> Here's the problem. <laughs> Daniel Jones has missed 23 games, and when you study it over a number of years, guys, as you get older, typically, you don't get more durable. Daniel Jones, for whatever reason, cannot stay healthy. Neck, knee, and if I'm the Giants and J.J. McCarthy is within reason, go get him, because hopefully you're not going to be up there for a long time. You cannot win consistently, knee, with Daniel Jones at quarterback against these great offensive teams in the NFC. Go get a quarterback, reset it, and go get a receiver. There's a ton of great receivers in this year's draft. I think you made Neek's head hurt. Neek? Yeah, I mean, Daniel Jones, part of the reason why Daniel Jones can't stay healthy is because you can't protect him. So to me, it'd be kind of absurd to make the same mistake again, where you're going to go get another young, talented, promising quarterback and put him in a situation where you're not going to give him a top quality receiver to get the ball out of his hands. You're not going to give him an offensive line that can protect him all that well. Saquon Barkley is gone and the defense is, hasn't been shut down. So it's going to be a lot of pressure to score points. Like I think Daniel Jones may not be the greatest quarterback known to man, obviously, but I think that even the Giants would admit that they did not give him a chance to succeed. So for them to not learn from what they, the mistakes that they made for Daniel Jones and then to go ahead and draft another quarterback in a situation like this, I think would just be really foolish. But I'll tell you, yeah, right you want to know why he can't stay healthy? They can't protect him.